Coming up next, I'll share some of the new jobs that are emerging in 2021, and I'll reveal the place we need to visit more often. We'll take your calls and your chat questions, and it starts right now. I'm coming to you live from Ramsey Solutions World Headquarters, and you are joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and how you can get there. In short, this is about the path to meaningful work for you. You were created to fill a unique role in your work, through your work. That means you are very valuable. You are needed. But it also means that you have an obligation, a duty to do what you were created to do because somebody out there in this world actually needs what you have to offer. You have talent, things that you do very well. You have passion, great emotion and devotion for work, certain types of work that you actually really enjoy, doesn't feel like work to you. That work has the ability to create a result in the world that you deeply care about. That's the sweet spot where you use what you do best to do work you love, to produce results that matter. I'm going to help you figure out what your sweet spot is and then find multiple jobs, career paths, even dream jobs in that sweet spot, in the marketplace. And then I'll help you come up with a plan to get there. Some of you know what your sweet spot is. You know what the dream job is. You just don't know how to get there. And some of you know what your sweet spot is, what real meaningful work is for you. You know how to get there, but you're afraid or you're doubtful. I can help you too. This is a conversation about your why and putting your why to work. Matching your income with your impact. That's fun. Like, who doesn't get excited about that? Even if right now you're watching, you're going, that sounds good, Ken, but I just I just don't know. Give me a shot. Here's how you do it. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. It's toll free. I'm here Monday through Friday, 12 Eastern time. What are you waiting on? All right. I know some of you are nervous about calling, so here's the deal. I'm grateful that you're here and watching. Keep watching. Keep listening to others. Walk through the same process of discovery that you could go through. And then hopefully I can earn your trust. 844-747-2577. You can also submit your question via the chat room. It needs to be very specific because I can't go back and forth with you. And we'll get to the laptop here a little bit later in the program. Also, I'm uh, going to teach on a place we all need to visit, but few of us visit it as often as we should. And when we visit it, we don't do it the right way. There's a little tease. See if you can figure out what it is. But first, you know I love to bring you up to the minute data and information that matters to you. Fast Company article out some of the emerging industries and jobs in 2021 because the world is constantly shifting. But I think we are in a season where we're going to see more jobs, uh, just more change in general than we would normally see through the normal progression of change and shifting. Uh, So let's go through some of these. Uh, Roles that will facilitate the new way of working. So think about the pandemic and how it created a boom of mobile workers. This was not a new idea, but it made it a everywhere idea. Working from home, mobility became the norm. Um, And some took advantage of remote work and made an actual move geographically. Indeed has seen a 600% growth in the listing for relocation assistant. So this is an example of new roles that facilitate the new realities of work. Uh, New roles will emerge uh, from uh, the tools we use. Uh, the rhythms by which we engage in work, you're going to see a lot of that. So pay attention to that. Uh, Logistics and warehouse professionals. The pandemic put an enormous strain on the supply chain. um, And and I don't think it's still fully functioning from just the 
the massive stress that the pandemic put on supply chain delivery uh, and beyond. And um, employment and transportation and warehousing rose substantially in December of 2020. Environmental sector jobs. Uh, I just think you're going to see more and more environmental jobs with the shift in administrations. And this happens. Anytime you have a, um, a huge change in leadership in the country, priorities change. I think you're going to see a lot of jobs around the environment, green jobs. It's not a new concept, but I just think you're going to see uh, a lot of innovation and a lot of opportunity in that area. Uh, e-commerce. Again, e-commerce was already a big space, was becoming more and more of a regular engagement in our lives already, but the pandemic just put more focus on it. It just fast forwarded everything. Uh, and then this was kind of fun, Joe, when I saw this, you see more jobs in the culture area of businesses. And I actually think this is a good thing as a guy who is committed to helping as many people around the globe find work that matters deeply to them and create results that matter deeply to them. We hear this almost on a daily basis on the show. I'm in a toxic environment. And I think there's two major reasons why 80% of the world's workers are disengaged at work. One major reason is it's not in their sweet spot. They aren't using what they do best to do work they love to produce results that matter to them. But the second big reason is, and I'm going to begin to talk more and more about this on the Ken Coleman show this year, is bad leadership. So poor leadership, bad leadership, weak leadership, whatever you want to call it. That's the other major reason why people are disengaged at work and why people leave companies. They don't leave companies, they leave leaders. So if you're a leader listening to this, you better wake up. People don't leave companies. They leave leaders, or we could say this. People don't leave companies, they leave cultures. We see this all the time. They love the work, love the cult, love the company itself and what it's about, but the culture is awful. They've had enough. So uh, workers in this area of developing healthy and efficient cultures, uh, I think you're going to see a lot of roles in this area. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I always like to give you all a glimpse of the future. It's really good stuff from Fast Company. 844-747-2577. That's the number to get in. Crystal's going to start us off in Manitoba, Canada. Crystal, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. How are you doing? I am living the dream. How are you? I'm great. I have a question. Um, it's funny what you were talking about is the culture and struggling at work. Um, I've been working in social services with adults with disabilities for over 20 years, um, and I'm stuck in a manager, middle manager role. Uh -huh. um, I feel stuck. Uh, I want to do more, yep. um, but I'm stuck by the... Um, the managers that are ahead of me or my coordinators or uh, the leadership that is or is not doing their job. Yeah. Um, so my question to you is like, how do I move on to do what I want to do mm -hmm. or what can I do? Yeah. Well, to what, let's, let's be more happier with what I'm doing. Yeah. Let's, let's take on that first part of the question. What is it that you eventually want to do? Oh boy. I would love to consult um, and coach. Um, Who? I love program planning. More of like um, the business leader, people that are in that. When you say program planning, is that like a logistical type operational role? Well, when you're working with um, adults or children with disabilities, there's an aspect of planning a lot of oh, the, got it. their aspects of life. Um, working with families. I love working with families mm -hmm. to uh, create opportunities and ideas. Great. Um, so it doesn't, um, you don't stay stuck. Yeah, um, where people are at, right? I love that. Um, yeah, you help people grow, um, even with it, when they have significant developmental disabilities, to help them grow beyond who they are, right? Yeah, um, I love doing that. Oh, I um, love I, that. That yeah. fires me up. So here's the question: oh. Can you do that in your current organization? Do you want to do that for another organization where you're in the when that infrastructure, but you play that role, uh, or do you want to do that for yourself? Well, I can do it. I've tried to do it in organizations, but I find I get caught up in uh, bureaucratic red tape yep. um, and being stuck with the managers who 
either don't share the same vision as I do. Uh -huh. um, so what does that tell you? Move at a very slow pace because I, I love to get things done. Yep. Um, I love to solve problems. Um, and I find um, maybe they don't have the same pace as I do. So what does that um, tell you? That's a bunch of evidence. You just stacked up some really clear evidence. Put all those things together. This is what I've been experiencing, Ken, and that's what you just said. And you went boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. What does that tell yeah. you? That I need to go on my own? I think so. If that's a consistent pattern. I'm not hearing anything that tells me Crystal's difficult. She's difficult to work with. She's just, her demands are too high. Uh, she's not reasonable. I'm not hearing that, and that's why I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is you've got a real vision for helping parents and kids that, that uh, w w would you call it special needs? That's kind of your area? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that's a very, very, um, that's a very, very intensive field uh, because it of the, na yeah, the nature of these. But you're so fired up about it and you have such a clear grasp of how things should be done and feels like that you see a lot of inefficiencies and it feels like the inefficiencies are driving you crazy because you see how it could be done and should be done. Am I, am I kind of on the nerve? You're right. Yeah, you're right on it. See, my thing is though, I have, I'm great at the vision, but sometimes I lack the details. Okay. But guess what? There are people who are really great at details mm -hmm. who, who you could sit with and go, here's my vision. I need somebody to implement it. And they go, this part of your vision is absolutely implementable. I don't know if that's a word. If it's not, it should be. Uh, but this part is too unrealistic. Here's why, why, why. And you go, oh, great, good point. Uh, let me let me point this out. That's Joe to me. Like Joe is detail processes. I'm like big picture. Anything can be done. Fair, Joe? Am I being honest with myself? Yes. Am I being self-aware? Yes. Um, I'm like that. I, Damon Gowd is my brand leader. He's like my chief of staff. That's him. I come with this guy on a daily basis with sometimes crazy ideas. They're either mm -hmm. crazy good or crazy impossible. Sound like you? Yeah. Okay. So the point is you can't be worried about your limitation there. I preach play to your strengths, right? Use your talent. So your yep. giftedness is in the visionary, creative, big picture. Your weaknesses are efficiencies and processes actually implementing them, but you see how it should go. Because I can say, that's inefficient. It needs to be better. I think it needs to be this, this, and this, but I'm not really great at the follow-through and the tactical. I'm just I'm just not. So I think you and I are kind of cut from the same cloth, sounds like. Yes? Yep, I agree. Okay, then. So what is it going to take yep. for you to succeed one day in your own organization and doing it the way you believe it needs to be done? You need a true yin to your yang. You know, you need uh, that person who is operational and they're an execution animal. They eat execution for breakfast. They get more yep. done before breakfast than most people get done all day. Yeah. That's a powerful one to punch. You guys are unstoppable. Yeah. It's to find that person, right? Or to find that organization to work for um, that has that same kind of drive, well, right? It, yes, but you may need to be patient. You may need to go, there's nothing wrong with what I'm thinking and feeling, but I've got to, I've got to, I've got to be able to process that properly and go, in order for me to get where I want to go, which you and I have identified it very loosely, but you eventually running your own organization that provides therapy and processes and whatever, for you know what I'm saying yep. you know it so we don't need to spend any time breaking that down but okay what's it going to take to get there you will have to answer that first but let's yep. say you you know I don't know if you need a lot of capital because you're not buying stuff per se maybe you'll need some things but if you develop your own processes your own curriculum your own tools your own therapy things how much money are you really going to need to start your own thing yep, I don't really think it's minimal. gonna yeah extremely minimal capital so then it comes down to, for me to start my own thing, I don't actually have to spend a bunch of money, but I've got to be in a financial place to be able to start it. So then you go, mm -hmm. could I start it on the side, or would that be a conflict of interest because of the space I'm already in? Well, let's just play this yeah. out real quick and say that it is. We go, okay, that's a challenge. So now what has to be true? Well, i got to stay in the industry, deal with my frustration, deal with the natural limitations, 
but keep getting better. More experience, more qualifications. And I work my way up the ladder. You know what? I'm going to stuff my frustration so that I can move up the ladder. What do I need to do to move up the ladder in my organization or another one that maybe have a better culture? I think you can find a better culture where they look at you and go, Crystal's a rock star. We need to promote the stew out of her. Mm -hmm. But even if you don't, you can still get promoted. Play the game. Why? Mm -hmm. More credibility, more money. Those two things get you to the place where you can step out on your own sooner because the more money you can make, uh, you're going to save money. And so now you go, okay, I'd like to be able to save six months to a year of my salary before I really launch out on my own. Makes sense? Yeah, makes I'm not sense. saying well, that's that your exact plan, but that's the thinking process. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good process. What about education? Um, Only and- get what you need. Okay. I don't go get it just because you think it's going to look impressive. People don't give a crap what's behind yeah. your name and what letters. They care if you can help them. Yeah. And in your space, you've got parents and kids and families in crisis. They don't care where you went to school. They're looking at you going, Crystal, we're exhausted. We need help. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. No, that's true. I just battle with uh, putting a degree behind my name to be more credible. Well, but, 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 but wait a second. What's real credibility in your world? Mm-hmm. You determine. You know what it is, so go determine what it is. Okay, that's just, this is yeah. real credibility. So why waste time and money getting a degree that doesn't actually matter? Yep. You will delay the start of your dream. Man, I am dropping yep. fire right now. Yeah. Crystal, well, I, I you're, think- you're ready. You know the plan. Get after it. <laughs> do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. Yeah. All right. No, nope. burning in me too. That's so good, Crystal. I'm 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 gonna put you on hold uh, because I got to sharpen my pencil. That was so good. I okay. just need a mental break. That was that good, Joe. And I haven't sharpened my pencil, folks. You need to know this is a real old school pencil sharpener. It's the real deal. The youngsters back there have no idea what this is. Listen to this. It's not really grabbing, Joe. Why is that? It must be sharp enough. No, it's not sharp enough. Maybe it's a. Uh, Oh, this is very exciting, folks. I'm going to turn the hole here and see if that gets better. Oh, I think that's it. Oh, yeah, a little bit more traction. I was hoping for a little bit more exciting sound effect, to be honest. That's why I paused to do this. I Should have got you a new one. All right, we're going to check that on the break. But it did sharpen, Joe. It did. It sharpened it. My, my pencil was dull. It was irritating me. Uh, and uh, I was really excited about that. Oh, well, that's not a prop. That's a real pencil sharpener. So Joe is very mechanical in nature. We'll get to the bottom of that. But as I look at it, Joe, yeah, it is sharp enough. All right, good. All right, Michael's up next in Houston, Texas. Michael, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken, how are you? Well, I got a sharper pencil, so that's a good thing. And uh, I'm living the dream. That's good, too. How can I help? Yeah, uh, the question I had for you is, do I leave a career in a dying industry and pursue a new career in a thriving industry? Well, on the surface, you kind of painted me in the corner. That kind of sounds obvious, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But, uh, but in the dying industry, I, I found my sweet spot. Oh, okay. I knew there was a but. I knew there was something mm-hmm. in there. So what is your sweet spot? Describe it. Uh, well, I was a, I was a petroleum engineer. And, uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. A what? Petroleum engineer, oil and gas. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and and you're saying that uh, what about that work makes? What do you love most about that work? What that's passion, and then mission is the results of that work that fire you up. Tell me how that job gives you great passion and produces tremendous mission for you. Yeah, the uh, the satisfaction of it was uh, was seeing projects to completion from beginning to end, so solving those problems from start to finish. I love that. Uh, I love the operational side of it. So I love seeing operations going out to the field and uh, being involved in in that whole aspect of it. And and the people, people are just awesome. So uh, those things were were the favorite, my favorite things and what I loved about it and what I was passionate about. I love it. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so easy, Michael. This is almost too easy. So here's what we learned. You're in the industry of petroleum, and you're going, Ken, that's dying, but I'm in my sweet spot. What in the world do I do? 
And all I ask you to do is describe what you love most about the work, passion, and what results of the work fire you up. And I wrote down, you love seeing projects to completion, you love operations, and you love working with people. And the results you want to produce are efficiency, execution, excellence, and you want to help produce personal growth in others. Did I get that right? Now you nailed it. Yep. I know. It's like I've done this a few times before. <laughs> so now the question becomes, <laughs> Michael, are there jobs in other industries that aren't dying, that are thriving, that allow you to be in that sweet spot? There are. I know. I didn't even go over your talent. I didn't even go over what you do best because we really didn't need to. So it gets back to reminding yourself of the ingredients of this current job that you love in a dying industry. And we go, oh. And, and so now we look and we go, where can I move to? Because I've got all the relevant experience. Michael, follow this. If there are other jobs, other careers, other dream jobs that are in your sweet spot, and there are, that allow you to see project to completion, work in operations, lead others so that you produce efficiency, execution, excellence, and personal growth in others. Do you have the experience to do all those things, even though it's a different industry? See, that's the challenge. Not immediately. Why? I will have to Why? gain more I have to gain more technical experience in a new industry. Why? Uh, because I I didn't I don't have 15 years of it like I had in patrol. Wait 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 wait. Okay, I may be missing something. So you may have me here. Yeah. Let's see. What's that role? We've we've been talking about the ingredients of the role. What is that role? How would you define it? What's that position? Title? I don't I don't want to get hung up in title because that 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 locks people up. What's that role that we just described? In a new industry? No, it doesn't matter the industry. That's where you're missing it. It doesn't matter the industry, dude. I, you already admitted that this role exists everywhere in lots of industries. Do you remember that? You remember admitting that? Yeah. So describe the role. Give me a one-word description uh, just for fun. I'll help you if it's not a good description. There's no right or wrong engineer. answer. Engineer. Okay. Yeah, I'm an engineer. Yeah. Great. So... Engineers in petroleum. Give me a couple other industries that you would think, yeah, I can definitely be an effective engineer. Give me some other industries. Well, I've already, I've shifted into, uh, I'm a software engineer right now. I shifted into tech. Oh, I didn't realize that. So you've already made the switch. I made the switch. The challenge is I'm starting all over from the bottom. Well, why did the, well, you set me up saying, should you leave a dying industry? I didn't realize you'd already left yeah. it. Well, now jobs are starting to open up again, but it's tempting to take those jobs where I was a senior engineer and making an excellent pay and enjoying what I, I, I did and or staying in the new industry and working through all the, you know. Is it truly it. dying? Is petroleum truly dying? I don't know. You tell me. No. 500, bankruptcy, 500 bankruptcies in the last five years. Yeah, but how many successful companies are there in the industry? There's there's a lot there's are they, a lot but there's whoa 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 you don't get to do that man you're messing with me Michael yeah. you know you're messing yeah. with me you're you're unintentionally messing with me you didn't give me all no, the information not. yeah and you you are you're not giving me the whole picture I'm having fun with you bro I'm okay. not upset listen yeah, to me got a pro you don't get to talk other than answer yes or no questions for the rest of the got call it. you ready mm -hmm. I'm gonna repeat my question. Are there a lot of companies that are crushing it in the petroleum industry? No. Oh, my gosh. You just said there were several companies that were doing very well. No. Oh, geez. All right, I'm taking the yes or no off. I'm at an impasse. Uh, <laughs> dude, you told me that jobs are opening up right and left. That's what you said. Yes? No, I didn't say that. Hey, Michael, I'm not kidding. Now I'm getting serious. You said mm -hmm. that jobs were opening in the petroleum field. You also said that there were companies that were successful in the industry. 
And when I said, is it really dying? You go, you tell me. I don't understand why we're playing games. So I'm going to shoot you really straight because I love you. But you need somebody to shoot you straight. You're so up in your head, you can't make any sense of anything. If petroleum is your area, I don't think the petroleum industry is dying just because there's been a bunch of bankruptcies. You said, and so you can explain to me what you meant by there are companies that are winning in petroleum. So tell me, what does that mean? Jobs are open. Companies are winning. What evidence do you have that the industry is going to die and completely go away? So Michael? I don't have evidence that the, the industry is not going to go away. I know that. Um, but what I did say, there are a lot of companies. I didn't say there are winning companies. And it's just the uh, the sheer number of layoffs that are happening. And uh, most people in Houston would, would feel the impact. Or they'll, how they'll many companies, how many successful companies are there in the, in the petroleum industry? Do you know? I do not know that, no. But there are. Yes? Possibly, yes. <laughs> Okay, dude, here's the deal. You need to do your homework. You need to do your homework. I I have no evidence that the petroleum industry is dying. None. None at all. Shifting? Struggling because of COVID? Yeah. But dying? Going to go extinct? No evidence of that. Neither do you. If you find evidence, then yes, you should stay in technology. But there's no evidence of that, and there are companies that are hiring. There's jobs that are out there. So you said, could, should I go back because I'm a senior-level engineer and I got a lot of experience and I can make more money? Yes, you should go back. Because if they eventually die and go away, you can now stay on that track and get more experience, more qualifications to shift into another field. But if there are jobs available right now that pay you really good money that allow you to stay in your sweet spot in the petroleum industry, you should go there, Michael. Do you understand? I do. All right, my man. I'm having some fun with you, but you're overthinking this. You have concocted a narrative that says you are going to be reckless or you pick your adjective if you go back to the petroleum industry, and that's silly. It's just silly. Petroleum is not going anywhere if I understand what petroleum is. So do your own homework, and uh, but no, I'd go back. Absolutely. Wow, that was interesting. 844-747-2577. Quick break. When we come back to the chat room for your questions, and I'm going to teach on the place you need to visit more often. Don't move. This is the Ken Coleman Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org. We absolutely believe in it. Welcome back. The Ken Coleman Show coming to you from our Ramsey Solutions studios in Nashville. Going to go to the chat room here. It's one of the ways you you can engage uh, in the show is the chat window uh, next to the video window there. Uh, Also, by the way, while I mention all that, if you're enjoying the show, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and share. We are growing. This is a a really unique show uh, here on YouTube. And what's great about it is it's global. The world's flat on YouTube. So if you have somebody that uh, you feel needs to engage in this conversation needs that counseling, coaching, and cheerleading, uh, send them on. All right, Kurt writes in, I'm 42 and I'm working towards a career change into web development. I don't know where to start when it comes to expanding my network on sites like LinkedIn and meeting others to increase job offers. You don't know where to start. Okay, let's start with who I know. All right, and so let's look at... um, Let's look at categories of who you know. Close friends and family. You know those folks. Then you have acquaintances. These are people that you are currently bumping into in life. So that's everything from if you go to social functions, church, um, sports events for your kids. 
Yet you're seeing these people on a regular basis. These are people that are acquaintances that if you run into them, you're going to be pleasant, say hi, and you could easily get into a conversation. Okay. Then I'm going to throw in social media acquaintances. So these are people you aren't bumping into every day, like I just described the previous group to be. But let's say you got 400 friends on Facebook. So those are your categories. How do you get started? You go, you tell everybody that'll listen when you bump into them. Those two first groups that are in person. And then on social media, you tell everybody to listen. Hey, look, uh, I'm currently uh, getting qualified or I am qualified. Whatever your situation is, I want to get into web development. And I'm looking for opportunities. Here's what I would ask of you. If you know somebody who works in web development or works for a company that uh, hires or needs web developers, would you, would, would you be willing to connect with me? That's it. Done. That's all you got to do. There's, there will be people who will say yes. There will be people who say, I don't know uh, anybody in that situation, but I know somebody. And so they expand their network for you. They go, oh, I don't know anybody, but I've got a friend who does. I'll connect you. And so that's what you do. Pretty simple stuff. Brandon writes in, hey, Ken, I had an interview on Friday last week. They said the next steps would be a test. I followed up with a thank you for the interview, but haven't heard back from them since. Should I follow up? Yeah, one more time. Uh, but do it two ways. Write a handwritten note and put it in the mail. Or drop it by the office, hand it to the receptionist. Handwritten note and the email that I'm that, that you also want to send another email. Both are brief, okay? And it's a gratitude and ask sandwich. Hey, so grateful for the opportunity to interview. I'm really excited about the opportunity to see uh, if I'm if if I'm a great fit for your company. Um, hey, just following up uh, to see if uh, you have an idea on when we would be doing the testing that you mentioned. Thank you again uh, for even considering. I'm really excited uh, and looking forward to the next step. That's it. That's all you do. That's all you can do. You know, it's the. Uh, and that's my formula. You can you can adapt that however you'd like, but here's the general rule: you got to go back to your dating days, whether it was high school or college, and you go out. You know, so I'll I'll, I'll bring it from the you know my perspective. You know, go out with a girl. Um, it's the million dollar question: When do you call her? You call her the next day. Say, hey, I really enjoyed the date. Uh, I'd like to go out with you again. Or do you wait two days? You know, it's the age-old question. And you know what we do? We just overthink that. Yeah, Joe's got an opinion. He says two days. I disagree. I go next day. I go next day. But it's it, here's just the point I'm making. It's actually great, Joe. I'm glad you... Let's go through that. What do you think, Amanda? Two days. Sarah? Is she on the mic? Okay. What's, what's the votes in here? Uh, one day. One day, one day. I agree with the youngsters. Here's why. But it doesn't matter whether it's one day or two day. But Joe and, and Amanda, so I'm, I'm going to see if you all agree because we all said one day. Here's why I think one day, but because it's how you do it. And this is a psychology teaching right now because it applies to the follow-up to the job interview. I go out with a girl, either she wants to go out with me again or not. Like my follow-up isn't going to change this fact. Okay, so we all agree. Yeah. So the company's either interested in the next interview with you or they're not. Okay, I'm just keeping everybody in track. When I follow up, let's assume that she wants to go out with me on a second date. If I wait two days, start to add, starts to put questions in her mind. Why didn't he call me? Did he enjoy it? Does he want to go out with me? Come on, folks, let's keep it real. So with a company, you want to show, just like I want to show the girl, if I do want to go out with her again, I want to show her that I am interested. That's a good thing. I don't want to go over the top. I don't want to say that you're my soulmate, I think, and I really want to take the next step. We don't want to scare a girl or said company. So the way we communicate is more important than the when. So you want to follow up right away. And so it's been a week. It's okay to do one more, but after that, bro, that's it. We're out. Because it's up to the company. Your follow-up isn't going to make them go, oh, yeah, that's right. We do want to get married to Brandon. It's not going to happen. 
uh, a reminder that you're interested. Huh, okay, that's right. We did say we did say we wanted to test Brandon. You know, it's like the girl. Okay, let's play this out. I I, I call the girl day two, uh, day one. Hey, great time. Really enjoyed it. I'd love to go out again. She goes, yeah, sounds great. Uh, and I'd say, okay, well, what about uh, you know next, next Friday night or whatever? She's got it. She might go. Uh, I think it's going to work, but I got a couple things going. Let me get back to you. That's where Brandon's at. So if the girl doesn't get back to me in a week or two days, yeah. A couple things going on here. Okay. Could be that she's not 100% sure if we got a long-term future, but she could still be interested in going out on a second date with me. She's just not in a hurry. There's a lot of things going on. You or, see what I'm saying? Or she's got memory problems. There's that too. So maybe the company's a disaster. Maybe they absolutely want to go on a second date with you, Brandon, but they're a little bit of a disaster. And so that's why it's okay to do what I said. But you follow up quickly. Don't let it exp- don't let it go too long because it's going to drive you crazy. And then you just you 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 uh, accept it how it is. So there you go, folks. Nobody's teaching this stuff on the on on the on 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 the old YouTube, Joe. All right, fun stuff. Okay, the place you need to visit more often. The place that I need to visit more often. The place that you guys back there need to visit more often. And not just visit it more often, but when you're there, make it count. What's the place? A place of rest. I want to define that. Because there, there's so many people watching this right now and you're going, everybody's kind of taking that a little bit differently. You're applying that phrase to yourself and you're going, what does Ken mean there? A place of rest. A place of rest is not a nap. A place of rest is not a sabbatical. A place of rest is not a vacation. A place of rest is an intentional quieting of your head and your heart. A place of rest is the intentional quieting of your head and your heart. All right, Joe, I'm going to warn you here. I'm about ready to do a sound effect in the mic, so don't, don't, don't jump. This is what our world is like for all of us. A lot of the time. It's just like that all the time. It's just nonstop. Nonstop activity. Parenting. Kids. Special needs child. Health crisis with a loved one. Social media. 24-hour media. And when you're watching TV 24-7, Joe, then not only do they have somebody talking at you, telling you something, they got a ticker going across the bottom. That's the world we live in. Okay. That's like a white noise machine. I sleep with one of those. And the dynamic of that is, is that when I first introduced it to Stacy, she was like, what in the world are we doing here? I said, babe, can you try it for a couple nights? She was not a fan. Um, My best pal, Bill, I've talked about Bill Hampton, my best pal, a lot on the show. He and I went to a football game uh, two years ago, went to a Michigan football game, and we shared a room. He didn't know, so it's bedtime, and we're about ready to go. He's in his bed, I'm in my bed, and that, that, you know, right there in the middle, you know, where you got the desk and the lamp, I just plugged my machine in, and he's kind of looking at it, but he didn't pay attention to it until I turned that sucker on. He was like, whoa, what is going on? Here's what happened, though. He told me the next night, uh, the next morning, he goes, I got to tell you. He goes, I I didn't think I was going to make it. He goes, about 30 minutes in, I didn't hear it anymore. That's why they do white noise machines in offices like Ramsey Solutions. That noise is very evident the first time you hear it, but here's what happens. When we keep hearing it, it disappears. That noise in my room, Joe, allows me not to hear any other noise. Exactly. So here's my point. The busyness 
that I described a few moments ago is what our life is like. And if we're not careful, we just get used to that crazy busy routine and we don't realize what it's doing to our souls, to our minds, to our hearts, to our bodies. And I'm telling you, a place of rest is the intentional quieting of the head and the heart. It could look like just quiet time in the morning where you're meditating or praying. Or as I like to do on Fridays in the spring and summer, Friday morning before I come in, I go spend a little time at the lake in our neighborhood and I just sit there and the only thing I hear is the sound of nature and I just am quiet. It gives me a real peace and clarity. My favorite thing in the world to do is my vacation in the summer and I will get up early before everybody else and go to the beach and sit right on the ocean. I'll take that old chair, you know, the little chair, and I'll just shove it in the sand and let the water come over my, my feet. And I just sit there. And the only thing I hear is the ocean and the wind. And I'll hear the occasional seagull, but nobody's out there yet. And I'm just quiet. What am I doing? I'm turning off the noise of busyness. I'm allowing my head and heart to be quiet. That's what I mean by rest. Vacations are good. Sabbaticals are good. All that's good. But that's a part of your rhythm. You need to have a rhythm of, of quietness of your head and heart where you can just <sighs> unplug feel. from everything. Yeah, unplug and feel what you need to feel. Think about what you need to think about. So I just want to give that to you. You can apply that however you want to. Uh, but I will tell you, it's been a game changer for me. Intentionally find ways in your daily, weekly, monthly quarterly, yearly schedule to rest your head and your heart. Get quiet. Turn off the noise. All the distractions. I think you'll find tremendous breakthrough emotionally and mentally. My time is almost up, but before I let you go, I want you to know you matter and you do have what it takes. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, this is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on.